We're going to go over the questions involving the triangle inequality. Okay, so that's on page 28. And I've been sort of umming and ahhing about where to put this because you do notice some of these questions pop up um, in complex numbers. Uh, but I do think it does involve some vector proof techniques as well. So we didn't do it in complex numbers, so we're going to stress it out here. And it is going to involve a bit of a recap of complex numbers and PMI, which is a good time for us to do it because hopefully it will solidify some of those processes. Firstly, let's just go over one of the proofs. Um, so I've got here three proofs for the triangle inequality, and I'd love you to read them all and comprehend them all. But we're just going to start with the algebraic proof, which I think is the most, um, the most straightforward. So it says, you know, if we have the modulus of A plus the modulus of B, all right? We can imagine two, um, you know, two vectors or two sides of a triangle or whatever. And what I'm going to start with is just squaring. Okay, we have the modulus of A plus the modulus of B squared. All right, what this will become is the modulus of A squared plus two times the modulus of A, the modulus of B, plus the modulus of B squared. Okay, now by definition, the modulus of A squared is equal to A squared. Okay, why is that true? Well, what does modulus do? It means you make it positive. And whenever you square a number, it always makes it positive. So we can perform um, that substitution. The other thing we're going to note is that the modulus of A is greater than or equal to A. Alright, so let's stress that one. The modulus of A means you make A positive. Okay, so in the circumstance where A is negative, the modulus of A is going to be greater than A. Alright? In the circumstance where A is positive, the modulus of A is going to equal A. So we can make that statement that the modulus of A is going to be greater than or equal to A. So then what that means is from this step here, all right, I'm just going to rewrite it as the modulus of A squared plus 2 modulus of A modulus of B plus uh, modulus of B uh, squared is going to be greater than or equal to. Now we've said modulus of a squared is equal to the a squared. Now here we have two modulus a modulus b. So we can write that as 2ab because what we're saying is this side is larger than or equal to this side. In the circumstance when a is positive, they're equal. In the circumstance when a is negative, this side is larger. Uh, and then we'll keep the b squared there as well. Um, now this becomes a plus b squared. Okay. Now remember, if the modulus of a squared is equal to a squared, then a plus b squared is equal to the modulus of a plus b squared. Okay, so let's think about, this is what we've got on the right hand side of this inequality. We've got the modulus of a plus b squared. And what did we start with on the left hand side? We started with this, so that is the modulus of A plus the modulus of B squared. And then we can square root both sides. And we have the modulus of A plus the modulus of B greater than or equal to A plus B. And we can flip it around the other way as well. Okay, so that's, I think that's the best proof. It's the most sort of succinct, the most straightforward. Excellent. So let's go over to these questions then. So I again, encourage you to read through the cosine rule proof and the vector proof. But let's get over to these questions here uh, involving the triangle inequality. So we probably won't do all of them. We'll start with um, like 1a. You may find them a little bit related, but 1a. Verify that the modulus of d1 plus d2 is less than or equal to the modulus of d1 plus or d1 is equal to 3 plus 4i and d2 is equal to 6i. So these are two complex numbers and we can see they're not parallel. I know they're not parallel because they don't have the same scalar multiple of the uh, horizontal and vertical component. So um, let's work them out separately first. So if I go to the left hand side, that's going to be the modulus of 
3 plus 4i plus 6i, which is um, 3 plus 10i. It's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 10 squared. Square root of 109 on the left hand side. We're going to the right hand side. We're going to have uh, the modulus of 3 plus 4i plus the modulus of 6i. Because what? 11 squared is 121. And the square root of 109 is going to be less than 11. Okay? So I know that was the problem. Splendid. So I'll leave you guys to do B. Um, let's move on to the next part, which is consider the parallelogram here. So I'm going to have a little bit of a sketch. We've got the proof down, so I can have that now. in terms of Z1 and Z2. So this is where our vector operations come in, isn't it? OQ, that is the vector from O to Q. Now because it's a pair of parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel and equal in length, which means OP is equal to RQ. So this vector can be written as Z1. And so then if we want to go, we want vector OQ, Okay, or complex number OQ. Uh, we're going to go OR plus OQ. Alright, which is going to be Z2 plus Z1. Alright, so the complex number OQ can be written, or the vector can be written as yeah, Z1 plus Z2. Okay, what about PR? Okay, from P to R. From P to R. Alright, so we're starting at P and going to R. We're going to have negative Z1. Okay, we're going to go that way. And then plus Z2. And so we can express that as Z2 times Z1. Alright, part B. Explain from the triangle inequality, from triangle OPQ, why. Z1 plus Z2 is less than or equal to Z1 plus Z2. So triangle O, P, Q. That's this triangle here. So I'm going to abstract that from our diagram here. Triangle O, P, Q. Okay, so we're going to make an argument here and we're going to be very precise about how we word this argument. Alright, so from triangle O, P, Q. Alright, this triangle here. Using the triangle inequality. Okay, using the triangle inequality, we're going to have O, P plus P, Q is larger than O, Q. Now they've got it written really the other way, so we'll like I, I can make that statement. O, P plus um, PQ is larger than or equal to OQ. Let, let's write it like this and then we'll discuss the case of equality as they get up here. Right, this is what the triangle inequality says, so because it's a triangle we can maintain that this is true. OP plus PQ is greater than OQ. Right? And then we might say, in the circumstance where 
all is still uh, holding the ball in the same way. And then I close the ear. So if they're in the same direction, if they're going in the same direction, then they're going to be equal. Alright? And what that is saying is if you have let's call it OP plus EQ, it's going to be equal to OQ in magnitude. Okay, that's what it's saying. That's what that's basically saying. Okay? So therefore, from this we can get OP plus PQ is greater than or equal to OQ. And what is OP? That's Z1. What is PQ? But Z2. And what is OQ? But Z1 plus Z2. Alright. Um, now, probably, probably, sorry, probably that must be meant to be that one would be more important than So that's the size of the. So it is written around the other way, but with this inequality, obviously we can just flip it around. Can't we? If, we, if we put this on the left hand side, then it flips the inequality. Okay. Do you guys want to go through C or leave it? It's pretty similar to what we just did. I think we might go through it, unless you got it wrong. We need to prove it to so we can take a look at it, yeah. Thanks for your feedback. So, we have triangle OPR. Um, from the triangle, explain why Z2 take Z1 is greater than Z2 uh, modulus of Z2 take modulus of Z1. So firstly, let's abstract <coughs> Triangle OPR uh, again, which is this one. OPR. Now, um, this corresponds with P1, this corresponds with P2, and this corresponds with, uh, we found it before, uh, P Z2 takes Z1. Now what they want us to show here is, um, what we're trying to show is that Z2 takes Z1 is greater than or equal to modulus of Z2 takes modulus of Z1. Well, this is a little bit different, okay? It's a little bit different because there's a further step involved. Um, and so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to say, using the triangle inequality here, okay? Using triangle inequality, we can have OP plus PR, alright, OP plus PR is greater than OR. I'm just going to demonstrate further triangle inequality rather than making a statement again about when they're equal. Okay, OP plus PR, um, and so that's the modulus of the infinite and moduli of those two sides are going to be larger than or equal to. Now, OP is P1, PR is Z modulus of Z2 take P1, and OR corresponds with Z2. Okay, and then from this inequality, we just subtract the modulus of Z1 from both sides. Elsewhere as well. So, 
using the principle of mathematical induction, prove that model two c model plus c is equal to plus all the way up to c n is less than or equal to model two c one plus model two c two plus plus model two c two or n greater than Oh, they've got K. We're going we're gonna to be using P of K, so it's probably better for us to use N. Okay, so this is what we're going to prove. All right. So remember when we're when we're doing P of minus, there's those. We remember uh, what's it? Skate. So we need to first state the free state. So we're going to prove um, that this is true. That N is greater than one, where N is an integer. Okay. So I've already made the statement. Then we have the test case, don't we? We test for the lowest value of n. Here we're actually going to do two because one of them is going to become insignificant later on. So we test for um, n equals one. Okay, we're just looking at the first, um, the first element of the series. We're going to have on the left hand side z1, and on the right hand side z1, and on the right hand side z1. And that, sorry, that's why I think it is important to make a statement, isn't it? Because we've got P of N is you know, that, that our proposition with regards to N is this, and then we can we can um, state that the test is true. Therefore, P one is true. And then we also know from our proof that we did right at the start of this lesson. We know it's true for n equals 2. Okay, we did that proof algebraically. Um, and so we're not, we won't go through that again here, but we have the modulus of z1 plus z2 is less than or equal to uh, the modulus of z1 plus modulus of z2. Okay, so we've, we've already proved that part um, over this page. We did three proofs of it. Um, the first one being the Okay, so you could reinsert that here if you're going to go through the whole thing. Um, we already done that part. So there's no point doing it. So we've got the state test. Um, and the reason we're doing this is, is because we're going to use it later. And you could employ the proof again later, but I'm just going to make a statement that we've already done here. Okay, so now we're at state test assume. We've got to assume P of <coughs> K plus 1 is true. Uh, state test assume. So assume, oh, sorry, assume P of K is true, isn't it? Assume P of K which is going to be the modulus of z1 plus z2 plus all the way up to zk. Okay, assume p of k is less than or equal to the modulus of z1 plus z2 plus all the way up to zk. Assume p of k is true, because that's a substitution we'll perform a bit later. Okay? Assume p of k is true. All right, now I may jump up on the big board just to Okay, so then we go consider or prove P of K plus one. Consider P of K plus one, which is going to be Z1 plus Z2 plus ZK plus ZK plus one. Then less than or uh, sorry, we just start with the left hand side now. Yeah? And if, like, I mean, if you want, you can write what it is going to be equal to, all right, or less than or equal to, which is this is what we're trying to prove that it gets to. Okay, so this is what we're trying to prove it gets to, and remember, this is what p of k plus one would be true. Let's start with the left hand side, and so that we can manipulate it to the right hand side. We have the left hand side. I'm just going to restate it here. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on um, these elements here. And what they are is just a series of numbers, aren't they, that are going to add up together. And so, one way we could describe that 
is um, is the sum of c back. Okay, so I'm introducing a new variable here. Uh, it's what you call like that. So then, what this expression becomes is the sum of c sum of c back plus. So then from, from here we'll call this part two, okay, of we proved it for Dennis two, okay. So from two, we're going to have, we've got two complex numbers. Just applying this part here. If we, if we just have two numbers, then we can apply the triangle we want to the two numbers. Alright? Now, um, what is the sum of ZK? Okay, so I'm just going to keep maintaining from here downward. It is this. So I've got to re substitute a factor just to demonstrate it properly. D1 plus D2 all the way up to ZK. Okay, and here's where we substitute our assumption. Alright, what was our assumption? That, over here, that this is less than or equal to this. Um, so, if it's this, then we can sub perform substitution of the BFK, and that's the K is true, therefore E of is true, so E is in box. Alright, so a bit of a recap of um, PMI, you know, sort of new context there. Um, inner volumes don't make a whole lot of difference. Cool, excellent. So, um, let's proceed with the uh, vector proofs. Let me know if you have any questions.